not getting enough sleep, or maybe you are getting enough sleep, but you're just not waking up feeling rested. Watch this video and I'm going to show you how to improve your sleep quality so that you can feel more rested and have more energy. Hi, this is Ivana and I want to help you get fit, healthy and strong. If that sounds good to you, please subscribe to my channel and hit the bell to be notified when I release a new video every week. I'm an online fitness and nutrition coach and really I want to help people be healthier, have more energy, just feel good at any age. Today I'm going to talk to you about sleep, which is a really key part of our lives. It affects every aspect of our lives. And the National Sleep Foundation says we should be getting about seven to nine hours of sleep every night. And very few of us are doing that. I think the average is like six and a half hours. Um, and even that sleep that we get is not always as restful and continuous as we might like it to be. So today I'm gonna to share some tips on how to improve your sleep quality. My first tip is to reduce your caffeine intake in the afternoon. So caffeine can easily stay in your system, in your blood for eight hours after you've consumed it. So ideally you're going to be finishing your caffeine around three to 4 p.m. in the afternoon. I generally, I'm fairly sensitive to caffeine and I don't drink coffee, I just drink teas. Um, coffee just doesn't agree with my stomach. So I tend to finish around three o'clock. I set that as my limit. Uh, and I know it's difficult because you wanna have some energy later on in the day, but it really will affect your sleep later on, even though you don't think that it will. If you have a coffee at like five or 6 p.m. or even like some people have it after dinner, which is crazy to me, uh, it will affect your sleep, even if you're not aware of it. So reduce that caffeine intake in the afternoon. My next tip is to exercise, but not too close to bedtime. So exercise on a regular basis helps you sleep better. Most people, when they get into a workout routine, if they've been off for a while, notice that they are sleeping better. Your muscles want to recover. It just, uh, it helps you deal with stress, which can also make it easier to sleep. So definitely exercise, but ideally not within two to three hours of the time that you're trying to sleep. Especially if you're doing something like weight training session or you're doing a HIIT session, like high intensity interval training, anything like that. Um, evening isn't okay if you wanna do something gentle like yoga. Um, and that's probably fine, but try not to do the intense stuff late at night because it can keep you wound up. Uh, I remember when I was uh, living in England and training in karate and competing internationally, we used to have sparring classes at nine o'clock at night. So from nine until 10.30, we used to fight. Um, and it was basically just fighting the whole time. So it's pretty, it's an intense session. It gets you pretty wound up. And I used to walk home and then it would take me sometimes until one o'clock before I could kind of wind myself back down and try to get to sleep. So gentle exercise is okay in the evening, but try to keep it low key. So, because otherwise it'll interfere with your sleep. The next tip is avoid blue light. So we started hearing a lot more about blue light that comes from your devices. So TVs and screens, and of course phones, uh, which most of us are pretty attached to. Um, and so these screens give off a blue light, which can interfere with melatonin, which is the hormone responsible for getting your body ready for sleep. So it's recommended that you avoid blue light. So that means any screens, any devices for two to three hours before sleep. Now, this is a tricky one. Uh, and I confess that oftentimes I really struggle with this because I do a lot of work at night on my laptop. And that's pretty much, I mean, I have a five-year-old, so a lot of my best work happens when he's asleep and I need to do that. But let's say at least an hour before you go to sleep, make sure that you cut yourself off from those devices. And in that time, you have a routine of other things you can do. For me, I end up doing folding laundry in the evening, which is pretty boring, but it is something that's kind of like easy. You're avoiding blue light and you're just kind of in a relaxed state. So try to get off your devices earlier in the evening. Number four, have a sleep schedule. So I know it's tempting to try to catch up on sleep on the weekends, um, but your body does function better when it's 
going to bed and waking up at the same time. So ideally you're going to keep that pretty consistent between the weekdays and the weekend. If you have young kids, they probably keep you on an early schedule anyway. Um, at least that's what I found. I don't get to sleep in as much as I used to. If you're a parent who's experienced that, please comment below. <laughs> anyway, so try to go to bed and wake up at the same time. It is tempting to try to squeeze in, you know, some extra time on the weekend, but it can actually make you feel worse. And there's actually, I think they actually have a term for it. It's like a, a Monday hangover, just like a, having too much sleep over the weekend. You can actually feel worse on Monday. And sometimes on Sunday, you can just feel really, really sluggish if you're sleeping in on that day as well. So try to maintain the same schedule throughout the week. And now this is a pretty important one. Prepare your bedroom. So ideally, you want a very quiet bedroom. You want it to be as dark as possible. You don't even want the glow of an alarm clock, even small lights that are coming from any devices. So you want your room to be as dark as possible. And you also wanna be mindful of things like your mattress. Like, is your mattress way too old? Do you need a more comfortable mattress? Do you need a firmer mattress or a softer mattress? So try to get something that's suitable for you. Um, the same thing with the pillow and your sheets, making sure that everything is, is kind of ideal for you. The other thing that's kind of quite important is the temperature of the bedroom. So if a room is too warm, then it actually interferes with your sleep. You're more likely to wake up frequently. Um, I feel really bad for those of you in warm climates who don't have air conditioning. It's really hard because um, it really does interfere with your sleep. So there are different suggestions for bedroom sleep temperature somewhere around 20 degrees is sometimes recommended uh, that's in celsius so i think that's about 70 degrees fahrenheit for you americans and um, maybe and even a little bit lower so if anything you want it to be a little bit on the cooler side and that helps improve sleep and lets you stay asleep longer my next tip is don't eat heavy meals so within three hours of going to sleep ideally you're not having any food at all. Um, I mean, it, some people can tolerate a very small snack right before, but if you eat a heavy meal, your body is gonna be busy digesting and you're gonna have a harder time going into a deeper sleep. Um, for those of us like myself who suffer from acid reflux, having a heavy meal will cause all that food when you lie down, all that food is gonna just come up and you're gonna start to feel discomfort um, for me, I get coughing as well. So that's the, the acid coming up. So you want to avoid having heavy meals, especially within those two to three hours before bed. My final tip for you today is relax before bed. So in that final hour, it's good to have some sort of routine that you go through. So things like um, reading, as long as you're not on a device, of course, or having a bath or just meditating, that's a great time to kind of do a little bit of relaxation. Um, maybe you enjoy journaling, something like that. Uh, if you have someone around who's willing to have sex with you, I also recommend that in the evening, so that's a great way to relax as well. Um, anything that kind of gets you ready for sleep and gets you a little bit more relaxed, it's good to have that kind of routine. So thanks very much for watching my video today about improving sleep quality. If you want help on your fitness journey, please do head on over to my website, ivanachapman.com. I'm offering a free ebook if you join my email list. And if you enjoy this video, please give me a like and subscribe and hit the bell if you want to be notified when I release a new video every week. I look forward to seeing you soon.